Hello, students. This question was asked in K twenty twenty two afternoon session. The question was like this: the length of members BC and CE in the frame shown in the figure are equal. Okay, all the members are rigid and lightweight, and the friction at the joint is negligible. All the members are rigid and lightweight, and the friction is negligible. Two forces of magnitude Q. Which are basically greater than zero are applied as shown, each at the mid length of respective members on which it acts. Which one or more of the following members do not carry any load? So in options they have given whether it is DC, FE, AB, or GH, and you can go for more than one as well. So this was MSQ type question. Here we should be understanding. okay so basically if i will talk about member ce or member cb then these members are not two force members not two force members and therefore we are not very sure that what will be the direction of forces in these members whether it will be only axial or it will include shear load as well but definitely for cd member For FE member, for AB member, and for GH member, these are two force members. I'm not talking about zero force members. I'm talking about two force members. So these four, these members are definitely two force member, and because they are two force members, therefore F1 could be acting along CD, F2 could be acting along FE. The direction, however, is assumed, but the line of action is perfectly okay. F3 in the same way will be acting along AB, and F4 will be acting along GH. So these members are axially loaded because they are. Following the definition of two force members, why they are following the definition of two force member? According to whatever in questions it is provided that all the members are rigid, lightweight, the joints are frictionless. From there, we are concluding the fact that okay, DC, FE, GH, and AB will be two force members. Okay, now in order to find that which of the following members will be zero force member, we just have to go step by step. First of all. here we should understand that in order to say that this whole system is in equilibrium summation fx will be equal to 0 and from there you can say q plus f4 will be equal to f3 in the same way summation f5 will be equal to 0 if i will say summation f5 will be equal to 0 so you can say f1 plus f2 is equal to q this is our equation number 2 Now, third equation is net moment about any point P is equal to zero. Now, as far as first equation is concerned, you should be able to understand that because this 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 is a slot given over here, and the member G H is horizontal, and we should understand by our common sense that this F four having two components, one parallel to this slot and one perpendicular to this slot. so the force which was parallel to this slot the force component of force f4 which was parallel to this slot will not be able to cancel by any forces okay will not be able to balance out by any force and therefore it is not possible for this member to be in horizontal position it is not possible to have some value of f4 over here okay so if this member is in horizontal position as shown in figure definitely f4 cannot be applied on this so f4 is definitely going to be zero f4 is definitely going to be zero from the fact that the slot can only resist the normal to slot force not parallel to slot force fine so from here you can conclude that f4 must be zero f4 must be zero and therefore f3 will be equal to q fine now last equation net moment about any point say point c is equal to zero from here you can say q into l by 2 minus f2 into l is equal to q into net clockwise must be equal to net counter clockwise q into l by sorry 
एफ थ्री इंटू क्यू इंटू एल बाई टू माइनस एफ थ्री इंटू एल फ्रॉम हियर क्यू इंटू एल बाई टू क्यू इंटू एल बाई टू विल गेट कैंसल एफ टू विल बिकम इक्वल टू एफ थ्री एफ टू विल बिकम इक्वल टू F3 and if F2 will become equal to F3, then by that we means that F2 will be equal to Q. So this is our third equation. And if F2 will become equal to Q, then from equation two you can conclude that F1 will become equal to zero. Therefore, F1 will become equal to zero. So from here you can conclude that force in member CD will be zero. And force in member GH will be zero. So these two members will not carry any force. So according to the concept which I think is associated with this problem, we can say that force in member CD and force in member GH will be zero. This was a multiple select type question. So CD and GH will be our answer. Thank you.